the volatility of Bitcoin on the upside and the downside, and then the um, the negative publicity and the the fear that a conventional investor, an institutional investor, would have to buy Bitcoin is uh, is in large part uh, due to uh, the wild west and the wildcatters and the crypto ecosystem. Welcome to Dream Richer. When do you think more banks and institutes will begin to back up Bitcoin? There have already been talks of fast food restaurants beginning to accept Bitcoin due to the Lightning Protocol that can process many transactions at a time. For example, Subway and KFC have been discussing the accepting of Bitcoin as potential payment. To no surprise, fast food restaurants aren't the only ones. For example, the Commonwealth Bank announced last week that it plans to allow users of its ComBank app to trade cryptocurrencies. Commonwealth Bank is the first of Australia's big four banks to do so. Even though the banks used to dislike Bitcoin in the past, but the tables have turned. In 2014, executives at Wall Street's biggest banks fretted that regulating cryptocurrencies would also legitimize them, and that could threaten the finance industry, but they tried to sow doubt. They called Bitcoin a terrible store of value that was also being used for illicit purposes. But now, more and more banks are experimenting with the blockchain technology. By the end of this video, Michael Saylor discusses what it would take for Bitcoin to see a large pump. If you find the video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. So the sooner that rationality or rationale and order comes to the crypto economy and the crypto industry, then uh, the better it's going to be for Bitcoin and the sooner that Bitcoin will emerge as a, as a mature institutional treasury reserve asset. The essential thing that you want to do after you acquire Bitcoin is to store it in a safe place. Now that safe place uh, isn't, isn't always a hardware wallet. It, it might be an organization like uh, Fidelity that's a custodian that you trust or some cold storage or some institutional grade custodian or a multi-sig arrangement with, uh, with a company that you vetted and you trust. But um, leaving, uh, leaving Bitcoin on an exchange has always been risky since Mt. Gox, so we all learned that. And I, I think that um, borrowing or, lend or, or generating yield uh, from uh, unregistered uh, or unlicensed bank is, or an immature bank is a risky thing to do. I think this is a painful lesson for the industry, but it's not a surprise. I think for the, for the business to grow up, you know, we need more mature, better capitalized institutions, publicly traded companies, uh, public banks, FDIC insured banks, right, uh, licensed, registered entities. Uh, when, you're, when you're doing business, what you want to do is always be, be careful when it looks too good to be true. Bitcoin adoption means recognizing Bitcoin's role as the world's best hard money asset a monetary asset with a strictly limited supply. It means recognizing Bitcoin as the best risk-adjusted and most liquid investment opportunity today. It means realizing that Bitcoin is on a path to potentially becoming the world's most valuable system for value, storage, and transfer. If Bitcoin ultimately reaches its potential as the world's best hard money asset, then its adoption by this standard could end up exceeding 50% in the long run. Do you think more banks, companies, and institutes will adopt Bitcoin? And so the volatility of Bitcoin on the upside and the downside, and then the, um, the negative publicity and the, the fear that a conventional investor, an institutional investor would have to buy Bitcoin is, uh, is in large part uh, due to uh, the wild west and the wildcatters and the crypto ecosystem. And the, the sooner that we clear out that leverage and the sooner that the world starts to distinguish between crypto tokens that are securities and then Bitcoin, which is a commodity, 
then the sooner the industry grows up and the asset class grows up. Any particular price target on the downside or the upside, because I don't want to disappoint myself or anybody else. Uh, I, I do focus upon the four-year moving average, and I, I think the four-year moving average reflects kind of the basis that most Bitcoin holders have in their Bitcoin. So I tend to think that as it gets close to the four-year uh, moving average, it gets a, a pretty strong base of support. But in the near term, given the fact that there's just so much leverage in the rest of the crypto ecosystem, and there are large hedge funds and large traders that have a much shorter term time horizon. They're going to control the price in the near term. I think all you can do is just look out four years or longer and uh, and maintain your strategy. And in the difficult times, just avoid getting liquidated, right? Make sure that you're not in a leverage situation where you get forced liquidated uh, during the difficult times. And uh, then in the good times, hodl because mm -hmm. um you know you'll generally everybody is not very good at predicting the future and so if you if you're trying to predict the future you know as a as a mere mortal uh the marketplace will probably make a fool of you it's clear from michael saylor's explanation that it's only a matter of time before bitcoin is backed up by large funds with that said there are still many things that are stopping bitcoin from mainstream adoption one of the biggest barriers is the price volatility of cryptocurrencies. Any currency needs to be stable in order to be used as a trusted medium of exchange. The more that prices rise and fall, the more ordinary people will shy away from using the coins for everyday transactions. Price volatility has plagued Bitcoin from nearly the beginning. Without careful planning from the very onset of a cryptocurrency's existence, it's hard to recover from the effects of speculation. Do you think Bitcoin will still win, regardless of these limitations? Let us know in comments below. To learn more about the latest crypto news, watch these videos here.